everyone. Good evening. Thank you for joining us again um, this evening at EHA Clinics um, Lab Academy for this webinar we're having this evening. I want you to quickly perhaps um, speak to colleagues who haven't um, um, who haven't joined in and so that they can quickly join us as we begin um, this webinar. Today we have we'll be looking at QC and QA. You and I know that um, um, quality assurance and quality control in clinical laboratory is, is, is an area that you cannot overemphasize. Everyone who comes to the laboratory comes to get a result. And um, just like um, um, we know, every laboratory will generate results. But then what stands out or what makes a difference is the quality of the results. What are some of those systems that the laboratory will put in place to determine the quality of results? Because like um, I would like to tell some of my students, we are guides to the, um, to the clinicians. Whatever we tell them is there, is how they operate. You know, I, I look at the clinician sometimes like a wise blind man, all right? Who knows, um, who has the wisdom on what to do, but doesn't have eyes. And the medical laboratory professional are his eyes into what is out there. So he may have the wisdom to give care, but he doesn't know so much of what, how to go about it. So we are his guides. And then if I, as a medical laboratory scientist, would be the guide to the clinician, I must give him quality results. I must, I must be able to um, give him accurate results, give him timely results, and then give him reliable results. Now, all of this comes at a cost. And the cost is quality. The cost is quality control. The cost is whatever processes it will put in place, you know, to, to ascertain this. Like my, my boss, Mr. Siva, who is on this call, would say, you know, that we cannot mortgage the cost of quality. Whatever is the cost of quality, you know, we go for it. Whatever is the cost of quality, uh, excellence, we go for it. And this is the reason we're bringing this all-important topic to us this evening. And our guest speaker this evening is someone, I guess, um, some of us within the, um, who have practiced in the Nigerian laboratory space would know. Her name is, um, it says, I call her Senior MLS Blessing Ekanem, who is the laboratory um, technical officer with WHO. And she has good expertise and experience um, in this area. Um, Ms. Blessing, maybe. I want to hand over the microphone, the stage now to you. I don't know if you can put on your mic. Okay, yeah, that's um, that's perfect. Yes, so Ms. Blessing will be taking us through this time. And I, I, I want to say everyone who is attending, please don't spare her with the questions, right? I think she has traveled far and wide and bring a lot of experience and perspective to what we do. So please ask all the questions. In fact, she told me the presentation will not be so long so that we can have time for questions. And truly from experience, I have found that, that our experts say much more during the question and answer time than whatever they have put in their slides. So if I were you, um, just give her the time to have give a presentation, but then be prepared for the questions and answers. So quickly, I'll finally say that if you have any questions, please use the Q&A section of your Zoom. All of you will be muted. You may not be allowed to speak, just the speaker. But after that, um, you can drop your questions and then I will anchor that from here. Over to you, Mara. Good evening, welcome. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, scientists. Uh, Obina, good evening, everyone. Good evening, colleagues. Once again, I remain blessing Odo Ekanem. I'm a medical laboratory scientist. And I'm also very, very pleased to be our anchor speaker tonight. Uh, like Obina earlier mentioned, I'm just going to present uh, very few slides that are going to be like an introductory uh, discussion. After the word, we will now open up the session. We really want to make it an interactive session, like we have always uh, mentioned. We talk about more practical things. What can we do to practicalize quality assurance, quality control in clinical laboratories and also beyond, including a public health laboratories? So very uh, quickly, 
my short presentation is going to take this outline. We give a brief introduction of quality assurance. We define it based on WHO definition. We look at the quality control vis-a-vis -vis quality, uh, external quality assessment as a, an important component of uh, quality assurance. We also look at the different sources of fault in the clinical laboratories. Then we conclude with one practical example of what it means to implement quality control, quality assurance in a clinical laboratory. So we say that the quality assurance is a plan and systematic set of activities that are put in place to ensure that the testing site produces quality results. When we talk quality, we are talking about accuracy, reliability, and most importantly, timely. The COVID-19 pandemic really brought this into limelight to make us know that the timely result is very, very important. And you cannot talk about quality if your result does not come out on time for proper patient management. Quality assurance is aimed at ensuring quality test results with an objective of giving re relevant, reliable, timely test results, which is interpreted correctly. So a result could be reliable, accurate, but if the test results did not come out on time for patients to be properly managed or to contain the spread of infection, there is still question around the quality of that test results. Uh, we now look at the, we said that quality assurance involves activities that are both inside and outside the laboratory, which means it cuts across the complete cycle, the complete workflow, the pre-analytical, the analytical and post-analytical. So if samples, clinical samples, are collected from outside the laboratory, quality assurance also covers those clinical samples. If result is to go out of your facility to a, a, a another facility, ensure quality assurance with that reporting of that uh, re result. So we see that quality assurance is also critical during the entire testing process from when you receive your patient up till the time you communicate the result to the patient. Either you communicate the result to a doctor, a nurse, or directly to the patient. So looking at uh, the WHO definition of quality assurance, WHO has defined quality assurance to be a total process whereby the quality of laboratory results reports can be guaranteed. So any step that you put in place, beginning from patient identification, sample collection and assectioning, the entire processing of the sample up till the time result is reported, re report is archived, sample are stored, all those processes put together they are all time quality assurance. It's the, it was summarized as the right result at the right time on the right specimen from the right patient with result interpretation based on correct reference date and at the right place. So at the testing site, we saw that quality is a degree so which a set of inherent characteristics fulfills requirements. This definition is drawn from ISO 900 2005. In the laboratory or the testing site, as mentioned earlier, when you talk about quality, you're looking at accuracy, reliability, timeliness. That's the only way the results can be useful to the clinician or to a public health officer. 
quality is important both at the testing site where you look at every aspect of the things you do. So in all aspects of healthcare, we speak quality, quality, quality. So quality management system, we all know has 12 quality system essential. This quality system essential, they have been renamed and updated in the recent ISO 2022 uh, 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 151189. But since we are not looking, in, we are not looking into QMS. I didn't really want to bother much on that, so that we'll have time to talk about the quality assurance and quality control per se. But I have also presented this to mention that quality assurance, quality control fall under process control. And process control is a very important component. It's one of the 12 quality system essential. The essential component of a quality assurance in any laboratory can be implemented through different steps. And the first step is the quality control testing. When you begin to speak quality, you begin to speak quality assurance, you begin to, to speak total quality management system, you, it begins with QC testing, you proceed to supervisory visit, new law testing for new law verification of incoming kits, proficiency testing. Then for uh, diseases like HIV, TB, we have blinded rechecking. We also have retesting. So these are these are different different uh, steps that a facility, a clinical lab, will begin to implement quality assurance. So we want to now narrow down to quality control as a component of quality assurance and a part of quality management system. So here we say that QC is a component of process control, like I mentioned before, and it's an essential component of quality management system. It's one of the essential uh, 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 quality management essential, like mentioned earlier. It covers the part of quality assurance, which primarily concerns the control of errors in the performance of tests and verification of test results. If you look at the the uh, the complete uh, process of the sample, the analytical, the pre-analytical and post-analytical quality control itself 